You're welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily, and this is going to be a difficult conversation, but it has to be had. Um, a little over 12 days ago, we all woke up to a very unfortunate news, and um, we were being hopeful, you know, that we'll get some good news. Long story short, it wasn't what we were expecting, you know. Our prayers, to some extent, I mean, in all things, we give thanks to God, but sometimes you pray, you ask, you tell God that let your will be done, but in your mind, you know the kind of answer you want. Mm. And so sometimes when the will of God is done, it's a very difficult um, kind of acceptance, but we have to just um, let it be uh, that we're going to have a conversation about Christian Achu. We've been joined in the studio by our very own Yahweh Jamin Tayao. It's mm. painful. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Um, <laughs> after that long wait, mm. and exactly. to have the, yes. this, this yes. kind of ending. Yes, yeah, yes. yes. You know, at some sad. point, you, you could tell our hopes, you know, feigning, but we were just holding, holding, holding on, on, you yeah, know, yeah, that holding. let there be a miracle. Particularly yeah. the morning where, um, you know, we spoke, uh, we had a report yeah. from the, the, the journalist. The journalist yeah. 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 No, not even the journalist. I'm talking about after the fact and, you know, we are waiting, 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 yeah. waiting, mm -hmm. waiting. And then just before he was found, we actually had a, um, a report from... Yes. Um, his it's, it's his, his um, agent, agent yeah. and then he was. He said he, were, he was there yeah. with um, his, his, the his brother, brother and, his and sister, his sister and, and so on and so yeah. forth. And bodies had been coming yes. out, you know. And uh, they were hoping, they were still yeah. hoping, you know, that he'll be found in a hospital somewhere, not exactly. In the you know, for me, at, at at a point, I was just praying that mm. even if the unfortunate has happened, mm. let us find him. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Some, that, I mean, it, there are a lot of people... Be found, oh, ex exactly. Uh, a lot of people will not be found. be found. And for me, that was going to be the most yeah. painful part, you yeah. know. Mm. I mean, you get closure mm. by seeing yeah. and accepting yeah. Yeah. the yeah. final is, decision, yeah. and then you know that this is what has happened. We can give him a befitting burial, yeah. and then we move on. Yeah. But if you do not find him, yeah. you don't know whether he ended up in a certain yeah. hospital. Could it be yeah. that something hit him so yeah. he's lost his memory yeah. he doesn't even know who he yeah. is again mm, mm, i mean mm, there were mm, too many yeah. things Question. running could, through people's could, minds yes, you yes, know yes, yes. and it could have easily happened so yeah i yeah. wanted to just give us a little bit of context um yeah. so one thing i noticed in all the reportage ever since he's been found um is that people have been talking about his personality and his humanity. Yes. I, I just, I just couldn't get away from that. You know, as I watched, I kept, I kept thinking, wow. Yes, he was a pro prolific footballer, but we have hundreds and thousands of prolific footballers. You know, people passed away in this earthquake, mm -hmm. but he wasn't being celebrated so much for his prowess on the field. But he was being celebrated by the teams he played for, mm -hmm. for his humanity yes. yeah. and his personality. Yeah. It, it, I, it, it, brought my just... mind, it brought my yeah. mind to one thing, mm. you know, the fact that he was doing all these things. And he insisted on people not knowing. Exactly. Don't, don't he go was tell very anybody. quiet about yeah. it. It wasn't for some kind of for show sure. off, yeah. you know, so you him. can really tell. So I was like, oh, wow, he was doing he all this, these. He did this, and he did that, and you, he did you this, get it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that is the true mark, yeah. you know, yeah. of God's work. Yeah. yeah. Doing it and yeah. not expecting any kind of um, praises publicity. and publicity, yeah. carry cameras yeah. and go do it. Yeah. I brought the jerseys and yeah. the boots. This is me, yeah. you know, sharing. Mm. It's all yeah. about social media. Yeah. 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 But you know, so. but you know, you know what the Bible says, right? You've received your thanks already if people praise you on earth and exactly. thank you on earth. You've already received your right hand. didn't know what yeah, your right hand exactly. exactly. is doing. But, but, Talk yeah, to us about exactly. him as yeah. a wow. footballer. As a footballer, yeah. well, you talk to his. His teammates, you talk mm. to his coaches, you talk to the administrators um, that saw him play, that worked with him, that saw him from afar. They will always mention one name and one, one name only, Lionel Messi. Mm. And that was mm. the name, and that was how um, Suleiman Muntari introduced him to Otunfo Osei II. When Ghana uh, was about to play against Egypt mm. in that qualifier, yes, that World yes, Cup yes, qualifier. Yes, 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 yes. And so his footballing abilities, it was akin to Messi. And because he's left-footed, okay. he's diminutive in size. Okay. 
and he's he's just fantastic mm. um, technically he was gifted mm. he mm. had everything in the in the locker mm. as they say um, speed um, uh, close control mm. that vision and that touch mm. that natural uh, feel for the ball mm. he just had it that natural feel for the sport yeah. he had it and mm. that that was him as a footballer yeah. and yeah he, he was that good he was that good i i remember i interviewed um jerry akamenko who played with him um at the 2013 yeah. half court yeah. and he said he was so good to him unfortunately he, he believes that he didn't really live up to expectations, his full, his his full, full potential. potential. Yeah. And that was how good he was. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly believe in that, that when he burst on the scene, um, Christian Achu was that good. That he, he really was that good. Yeah. But um, things don't always go the way you plan it. Um, uh, life isn't linear. Yeah. Mm. Football careers aren't linear. Mm. Um, you have ups and downs. But because at the end of the day... Because he as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, he put together a solid career. Mm. If you spend... Yeah. As many as what six seasons, no seven seasons in the English Premier League. That's a long time. That's that's, that's beyond solid. Time. That's yeah. beyond yeah. solid. Yeah. Yeah. And you play for Malaga. You go play in the Dutch um, Eredivisie for Vitesse Arnhem, and you you go to um, Saudi Arabia. Mm. You come back to Turkey. Mm. You are you are getting some game time here and there. He pieced together a solid career, and, and there's nothing for, you can. He didn't play for ordinary teams. I mean, he played for Everton. FC Porto, he played mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Everton, uh, Chelsea, AFC Bournemouth, yeah. Chelsea, yeah. Um, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid, 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 solid teams. Team. So for me, yes, he we we expected a Lionel Messi kind of um, career for him based on his talent, mm. but, and he didn't quite get to that point. But at the end of the day, he pieced together a, a brilliant career. Look, if you. If you end up on the books of Chelsea, though he was sent out on loan, you go play for Malaga, you go play for Vitesse Einheim, mm. AFC Bournemouth, Newcastle, um, Everton, mm. and you played in the English Premier League for six years, and you spent one year in, in Netherlands, you spent one year in Spain. Look, you, you put together a, yeah. a beyond yeah. solid career, and yes, um, you have to celebrate that. Mm. You have mm. to celebrate that. And like you said, beyond his football, yeah. it was the philanthropic things he did yeah. that people are talking about, the humanitarian yeah. uh, aspect of his life. And um, in a 2019 interview with The Guardian, mm. um, he stated that um, he's very lucky to be where he is and that he feels that um, he should only give back hmm. because growing up he didn't have anything and now he has too much. Hmm. And so it is only right for him to give back. And mind you, this is a guy... Who wasn't the highest paid? No. Mm -hmm. He was no. far from being the highest paid mm -hmm. player on any of the teams that he yeah. played. Yeah. And this guy always found um, time, the resources to give back. Mm. For football boots and football jerseys, oh, those were nothing. He just kept giving them away yeah. consistently. Tule Muntari praised him for it. Several people praised him for it. And on top of that, he helped fund... Uh, the construction of a school mm. block for 300 children. The prisoners? Yeah. Um, yes, at Senyabriku, yeah. then the prisoners bit too. So mm. you had all these things that he was yeah. engaged in, he and, was and, doing. You know, and sometimes when things like this happen, you listen to the less privileged, you know, mm. in society, what they say about the person. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, when you do theater, they tell you that a person's character is determined by what he says about other people, yeah. what he says about himself, what he does, and what other people say about him. Mm. And I think that is what has defined, you know, who Christian Achu is. Yeah. And the fact that you go to his community, I mean, oftentimes you, you, you go back to such communities and you hear people talk about, oh, he doesn't even come here, yeah. you don't even see oh. him. <coughs> you know, I, I mean... With, Apenkwa, he, he, he had some, in his upbringing, he spent some time here at Apenkwa. Yeah. We went over to the Apenkwa uh, AstroTurf, yeah. okay. and some of the guys stated that he, once he's in town, yeah. he comes around, they, they play, buys food and all, and gives them jerseys, football boots, and all that stuff. And um, sometimes he invites them to his house. Even give them and, money. And once they are leaving, he, he said in quote, yeah. with 300 <laughs> video, <laughs> or Bema, with 300 video, or wow. those kind of things. Wow. He, he, he used to do yes, it on a regular <coughs> basis. And so, angels don't live long on earth, you know. So, and yeah, it, it, is, it is sad. These are some of the things that make people question God, you know, that 
a lot of life dependent on mm. this one person. Mm. Mm. Why would you take him away? Well, you life? know what I heard somebody say one time? If you like nice things, you think God doesn't like nice things. Is he going to play football in heaven? It's not about no, football. No, he needs his company. It's about the nice things. But we need any more here. Guy. You have um, Simple and short. former Newcastle guy. United um, head coach, Rafael Benitez. Yeah. Talk so glowingly exactly. about him. Yes. And Rafael Benitez, Benitez is as stiff as they come. Yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> he, he doesn't have, you know, good, I wouldn't say good relations. He doesn't have the best of relationships with, with his players. He keeps it very professional. He doesn't yeah, no try friendly. to be emotionally yeah. connected yeah. to his players. And you should, have, you should have seen and heard him yeah. talk on yeah. Sky Sports yeah. Yeah. about Christian Achu. Yeah. Um, I remember in his final days with Newcastle, he had a little bit of frustration with um, playing time. Steve Bruce um, didn't see him as part of the team, mm. but he still kept his composure. Yeah. He still kept his... Um, his good mannerisms mm -hmm. about him and Steve Bruce had nothing bad to say about him. Just that he believed that Achu was uh, Achu needed to move away from the team to get playing time for mm -hmm. his own good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he decided, okay, I will stay and play out my contract. Once mm -hmm. my contract ends, then I'll leave as a free agent. Mm -hmm. And he did. Once, once his contract ended, he yeah. moved to Al Raib in Saudi Arabia. He played mm -hmm. there for a season. Then he moved to um, Hatay Sport in Turkey. And unfortunately, you know, it, it, it looks he like caught up in the earthquake. We are seeing how huge mm. of a person he, yeah. I don't know if yeah. he, he Dr. is Dr. Lawrence was, said it last know, night. Until his death. Mm. I mean, he's bigger than we saw him when yeah. he was alive. Yeah. You know, all the things. Yeah. And I'm sure the world is even shocked yeah. as, as to yeah. how huge he yeah. is. You know? no, but yeah. think about it. How many people, um, even contemporaries of his, would pass away and get that sort of global coverage that's what that I he's mean. He's getting, yeah. you know, and that, that's why I, 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 I prefaced my, this conversation by saying that I don't think it's about his sporting ability. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's about Far his humanity. Yes, yeah, humanitarian work. Especially yeah. in an era where you have yeah. a lot of um, social media, TikTok, mm, mm, Instagram, mm. you see all these athletes. Yeah partying, yeah. you exactly. see them yeah. popping champagne, yeah. they will just be pouring yeah. all the champagne, yeah. Yeah. wasting it away, yeah. but you go check the price of the champagne, it's yeah. $5,000, yeah. $10,000, yeah. actually did none of that no, stuff. No. Yeah. He'll keep that $10,000 and, and come and give it to people. charity. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you build like a school for 300 children, yeah. yes. you know, he knew you see, where we came from yeah. and where he was yeah. going. And yeah. so, you know, in a council, or you're UM4, and he saw himself as such yeah, yeah. and lived accordingly mm -hmm. and decided to give back to society yeah. Yeah. because of where he is coming from. Yeah. There's um, a report on Achu and his, his arrival. Yes, his when, arrival when, when, when and how his he was, was received. Yeah. Very emotional. Let's take a look at that. We'll be right back. On behalf of the Trasan family of Adan, and on my own behalf as, as the elder of the family, I'm giving thanks to the government of Ghana for the work they've done to bring the mother remains of our dear son into Ghana. Also, thank every Ghanaian that has contributed since this thing happened to today. We are grateful. 
We are saying, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you very much, Nene. Just from the Sporting Fraternity and the Ghana Football Association, I'll humbly invite the General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association, Prosper Harrison Addo. So we, we heard the head of their family or the elder of the family who has given us uh, some gratitude or to the Your entire Ghanaian. Let's now move to the, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Bahomia. Honorable Ministers of State here in Gadet, other dignitaries from government, I stand here on behalf of the football family, both in Ghana and the rest of the world, as we re receive the remains of our dear brother and for many our son, From the football family, we want to send our condolences to the immediate family, the wife and children, and indeed the entire external family. It is with great sadness that we stand here today. There lies a son of Ghana who brought a lot of joy to our hearts. Outside the field of play, he contributed and touched a lot of lives with his good deeds. And in the past few days, we've heard so many that he did without broadcasting it. And many are sharing testimonies about how he supported and helped them. We are reminded of the joy he brought to us. And on that note, the football family would stand shoulder to shoulder with family and indeed the government of Ghana so that together we'll give a befitting barrier to our star who brought joy to our hearts. The Vice President is now about to address the gathering. Uh, let's take a listen to what he has to say. The Minister for Information, Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources, the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the Deputy Minister of Sports, Ghana Ambassador to Turkey, and Turkey's Ambassador to Ghana, the Secretary, Gen Executive Secretary General of the Ghana Football Association and members of the GFA, Nene Trasam, members of the Trasam family. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the security forces, members of the press, and Ghanaians who are listening all over. It is a very sad day that we are here to receive the mortal remains of our brother, our son, our husband, our uncle. The tragedy that occurred in Turkey about a week ago is one that was devastating. And we anxiously and nervously prayed that our brother Christian Achu would be found alive. We hoped against hope every day that passed. We prayed and prayed. But alas, when he was found, he was no more. 
would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the president and the government to extend our sincere condolences to the Chwasam family. I choose twin sister and his brother accompanied him from Turkey home. I'd like to extend my condolences to all of them and their entire family for this deep loss. I'd also like to extend my condolences to the footballing fraternity. I chew played for the Black Stars and he was much loved and we will sorely miss him. I'd like to extend my condolences to the Ghana Supporters Union and to all Ghanaians for this loss. It is a painful loss, a very painful one. But as the good Lord says in the good book, that from him we came and to him shall we return. We pray that the soul of Christian Achu rests in perfect peace in the bosom of the Lord. Thank you very much. And I would like to say that the state will be fully involved with the family in providing him a befitting barrier. Thank you very much for your attention. The body, as you can see, of Christian Achu is being moved by military men to the hairs. And uh, the, I want to probably so re-emphasize what the vice president said. The vice president gave assurance to the family, the Trasam family brother, of Achu, and a promised that the government will play his part to ensure that he receives a defeating burial. So the burial party is now marching the body to the hearse, and the hearse has been opened now, where uh, he would be put into that particular uh, vehicle, vehicle where uh, he will be driven probably to a destination we are yet to to, to ascertain. So you can see in your shot, this is the live coverage of the arrival of the body of Christian Achu, who, so they are matching him. Gentlemen, as you can see, the body of our dear brother, Mr. Nachu, has been put into the hairs and it's moved straight to its destination. This is very, very, very painful. I mean, for you to go probably, you know, with first class mm -hmm. and come back as cargo. Mm. This is terrible, you know, on foreign soil and all mm. that. It is painful, but in all, we give thanks to God. Mm. He alone Understand. can explain because for mm. this particular one, mm. look, we just can't find answers. But who really was the man at you? Let's take a look at this report. Body. Broke on February 18. Ghana's Black Stars player, Christian Achu, is no more. Just as the hammer time gives way to the heavy clouds to shed tears of rain, the initial disbelief that greeted Achu's passing has weathered away with reality. From the high and mighty to the most noble of men who watched him play, heard about his philanthropic deeds, or took in the gut wrenching ordeal of the 12 days' wait or news of his whereabouts, tribute have poured in.
in the earthquake in Turkey and Syria with a moment of applause. Este é o momento de homenagem a Cristiano Atsu, ali no centro do terreno, o capitão do Futebol do Porto com a camisola 20 que Cristiano Atsu utilizou enquanto jogador do Rio Ave, o capitão do Rio Ave com a camisola 27 que Atsu utilizou enquanto jogador do Futebol do Porto. Ele foi campeão nacional em 12-13 pela equipa do Futebol do Porto. Na época anterior jogou emprestado pelo Porto no Rio Ave, então orientado por Carlos Brito. But who was this man who touched the hearts and lives of so many people beyond football? Christian Aki Kassam was born on January 10, 1992 in Adafwa in Ghana's Greater Accra region and played organized lower league football with the West African Football Academy before joining Kasua-based Chita FC. His undeniable skills that many labeled akin to Lionel Messi's led to a fast rise through the ranks to the juvenile side of Portuguese giant FC Porto. A brief stint at Rio Ave led to a recall and to a more prominent role at FC Porto, where he won the 2012-2013 league title. His fine form led to a high-profile move to English Premier League side Chelsea FC, but was immediately loaned out to Dutch club Vitesse Arnhem. Further loan deals to Everton, AFC Bournemouth, and Spanish side Malaga ensued before a loan move to Newcastle United in the final year of his five-year Chelsea deal. Scoring five goals in 32 appearances and stringing together a consistent run of top performances to end Newcastle United promotion to the Premier League from the Championship led to a four-year permanent deal for Achu. He played two seasons under Spanish coach Rafael Benitez at Newcastle and he is noted to have described the two-time La Liga winner as a father who is very good at man management. Reflecting on his time with Achu, Benitez was equally effusive about his relationship with the Ghanaian winger. I'm really sad uh, to hear the news, but I, I was following the news for a while because uh, they said that he was fine, he was in hospital, and after it was not true. And I was in contact with uh, one ex-player, a Turkish player, and he was telling me that he was feeling that it would be bad news. So really, really sad because he was a nice, nice, special person. He was a good professional, very good professional. And I don't talk about if he's a good player or not. He was, he was a, a nice lad, good player, but especially really nice person. So a special person and everybody always, you can see the pitches always with a smile, playing or playing. So really sad for him and for everyone that has been involved in that because it's a tragic news. I am, I tell you that I was in contact with him maybe last month. He had some messages and we were sharing messages and I was really, really bad. It's very difficult for me in expression English, but the, I was feeling so bad and I was trying to, to contact him. what I said, I was talking with an ex-player that he was playing in Turkey and then he told me that the, he was talking with a member of the staff and he, had, he was feeling that he had bad news. And today when they confirmed that, it was... But the, also I don't want to forget the rest of the people because there are a lot of people uh, has been in a really difficult time and I think that we have to help them in a way and then uh, today we have to remember the uh, Christian, but uh, really sad, really sad. Anyhow serves as the present head coach of the Tyneside club, but was the head trainer at Bournemouth. Why not you play for the Cherries on loan? Though their time was quite short, a choose down to earth attitude, nurtured mannerisms, and kind heart was enough to leave a lasting impression on how. That's a real tragedy for Christian, his family. I woke up to the news as everyone else did, and I was truly devastated for, for him, as I say, and his, and his everyone that knew it. A lot of players in, the, in our dressing room that, that worked with him for a couple of years and yeah, I've made reference to that you know, before the game, speaking to the players because I felt it was something we needed to do. Um, uh, we'll pay tribute to him today as a football club with a minute silence and um, yeah, our thoughts are with him. A one-year spell with Saudi side Al Raib followed at the conclusion of his four-year stay with Newcastle. He signed a one-year deal with Osule Muntari when introducing Achu to the Asante Hene or Tunfo Osetu to the second, ahead of Ghana's crucial game against Egypt. The first of two 2014 FIFA World Cup playoff games was as big as they come, and Ghana ran out with a show-stopping 6-1 win over the Faroes, with Achu scoring the final goal 
by smashing the ball into the bottom right corner with a trademark cut infield onto his left foot. Et même s'il reste un match retour à jouer, on peut presque dire que cette génération égyptienne ne connaîtra jamais une phase finale de Coupe du Monde parce qu'il faudrait gagner 5-0 au match retour. C'est extrêmement peu. Though his best run with the Black Stars came at the 2015 AFCON where he was adjudged the best player at the tournament, former teammate Jerry Akamenko recalls the 2013 AFCON held in South Africa as his fondest memory of Achu in Black Stars colors. Achu scored in a 3-0 win over Niger to qualify Ghana to the quarterfinals. And for ex-Black Stars defender Jerry Akamenko, who was part of the 2013 team, Achu's quality was evident throughout the competition that had Ghana finishing fourth. During the um, game, I think 2013, um, AFCON in South Africa, um, I think he was one of the best in the team at that time. I wouldn't, that's why I, 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 I cannot pinpoint one game that I, I could say he was the best. But, you know, overall in the team, he was, he was, he was the player that, you know, made the difference for the Black Stars in that tournament. So uh, if I could remember him, uh, most of the games, even I wouldn't even talk about the Ghana easy game, Kumasi qualification he came in and then he scored. But then again, I would say, I'll, I'll, give him, I'll, I'll give everything to him in that tournament in the 2013 in South Africa. It's Ghana, come down the left. We've got a bit of space on the left here. It's come into the box. Jan, little chip across. It's going to be 2 0, is it? Flies in there, but Atsu puts Ghana. 2-0 up on 22 minutes at Sue the Man. That was a really cool cut. As a father to three children, Achu showed on countless occasions he was more than an athlete by helping people in need. In a 2019 interview with The Guardian, he shared what makes it a near compulsion to give back to society, saying, I am very lucky and privileged to be in this position. I had nothing, and now I've got too much, so I have to give something back. After leading fundraising activities, for the construction of a school block to house 300 children, Achu regularly gifted football boots, jerseys, and money to community football clubs in Ghana. This school will provide education to over 300 underprivileged and orphan children. So far, we've managed to raise enough to buy the land and start the build, but we need help to finish the project so that children get the education they deserve. Having grown up in Ghana, I know that education is vital to break the cycle of poverty. If you can help, then please use the links on this post to donate. Midasi. I think uh, when I was young, somebody inspired me. I also would like to inspire others. to feel like a family, we have to feel like one. Uh, we don't have to neglect them, we don't have to uh, push them away from us because they really need us. We have to create jokes with them. Uh, we have to make them happy, which is very important. And, and that's what I'm trying to do uh, for these kids. I want them to, to get a better education, to have a good future, so that our environment or the community uh, will be better. Former national teammate Sule Montari commended Achu in a Facebook post 
in 2021 after the Wenger donated tons of football boots to charity. He wrote, Christian Achu still managed to think about others. All these soccer boots for charity? Wow. Father, please bless this gentleman. Achu also served as a key ambassador for charity group Arms Around the Child. For the many lives he encountered, touched and impacted, Christian Achu will be missed. Um, like he was a playing colleague, let's say a friend. Yeah. Um, he was um, actually a good person, very quiet, jovial, and you know, like you know, uh, a guy to be around. You understand me? Always positive, reserved, and you know, he had it all. Like somebody who is around, you never get tired of. If you want to speak to him, he's already. He was always open, and then um, if he comes to jovial those kind of things, you know, he was always laughing and then they were always bantering themselves and, you know, he was quite a good guy, really quite a good guy. It's a sad day for Ghana, Africa and world football at large. Um, as you are already aware, his contribution to football in Africa and then to a large extent in the whole of the world or in the world in general cannot be disputed. I mean, this is a uh, a young man who dedicated his whole life to football. Apart from that, his benevolent activities, um, uh, his uh, good and kindness to humanity and the society at large. I mean, the one that comes to mind was his uh, contribution in making sure that inmates or prisoners are freed based on uh, some um, monies or some uh, fines imposed on them, which they've been incarcerated because of uh, little fines and uh, here and there. And so, for me, I think that um, his pay is reduced. His pay reduced for if you've known his humble beginning to even his last minute on earth, um, you realize that this is a player who is so re respectful. He's very, very respectful and. Uh, Everywhere he's played, you, you hear of very good commendations and very good comments about him. I mean, all he's playing. Talk, I always listen, but I don't hear nothing now. I don't hear nothing. And old girl still be trying to tell me what I'm missing, but I don't hear nothing now. Nah, I don't hear nothing now. Nah, 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 it's a Joe Linton who's free. It's first goal for Newcastle nah, United. Christian Atri Chassam was a good man who cared for family, friends, and everybody who came in touch with him.
Rest world champ. Hmm. A great sportsman, a philanthropist, a husband, and a father. Christian Achu is no more. Very, very difficult to accept. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, very difficult to accept. Very difficult to accept. And it's, uh, it's a heavy morning. It is a heavy morning. And you, you just can't help but ask, what if? What if? Yeah. What if? Like, yeah. the circumstances that there led There are so many to, what ifs. There are so many what ifs. Yeah. There are so many what ifs. So, so, the guy had, had bought a ticket to fly from Hattaya to Istanbul. So yes. that's why I said that maybe he, he didn't even have to score the goal. That's, that's what um, Hattaya sport manager said, uh, Fatih Elek. That's what he said, mm. that um, in the lead up to the game, um, he had already bought the plane ticket and because um, he wasn't too happy with his playing time. And so if the coach had not brought him off the bench and had he not scored the goal, he would have left probably, likely, most likely left that evening. And, and flown out to Istanbul. Now, the thing is, Turkey is a little over three times the size of Ghana. Mm. So it's more like you are in Wa, where he is, uh, where he was. That's Hattaya. It's on the eastern part of Turkey, mm. close to the border with Syria. Mm. And Turkey is at the crossroads between Europe and Asia. Yeah. So he was on the eastern side, far off. Um, from the main cities, Ankara and Istanbul. Mm. So the plan was he, um, to, to move out from Hattaya or fly out from Hattaya to Istanbul, then later from Istanbul to um, France. And later, later this morning, um, um, Sani Dara, former communications um, head for GFA, he also stated that, um, Achu confided in him that um, he also had plans to um, probably sign for a team in UA, United mm. Arab Emirates. Mm. So, he, was, he had made moves to move away from Hattaya Sport, and he ended up scoring his first goal for Hattaya Sport, which, which, ended, which sort of turned out to be his last. Some celebration. And, and in the midst and of the celebration, like, you know what? Let's cancel in the midst goal. of the celebration, his teammates came together, and I'm dead sure the coach was elated, and in the, in the state of elation, he promised him you know, so, things are going to change. Yeah. Things are going to turn around. And in that moment, I actually decided not to um, go board, the board the flight or yeah. um, go and fly out from Hattaya. And, and yeah, it for, led for to me, um, I, I think he that getting trapped. This was this meant earthquake. to happen. Because as human so, as we are, you know, sometimes yeah, you make plans, difficult. you make decisions. It it's very difficult to explain why the last minute change why did it and we should also not forget that this was nobody's fault this, this yeah, was natural a natural disaster, disaster. And you know? is, so it looks like it, it wasn't like maybe he was not well he was taken to the hospital no. hosp maybe a hospital negligence you know yeah. no. or um he was in a vehicle the driver was careless so you can blame somebody it, it was a natural purely, disaster natural disaster and the thing I is mean, uh, you remember the haiti earthquake right yeah, yeah. That claimed so many lives. Mm -hmm. That was in the magnitude of the six range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This earthquake was seven point yeah. eight. Yeah. Yes. That's that's one. what people I don't think people really understand what it means. Yeah. It was felt as far away as Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mm -hmm. see. That's also, on the mm -hmm. in the south. Not worse. Also, it was felt as as far away as Denmark. Yeah. Now you see also the thing about earthquakes is that if it happens closer to the crust of the earth right it's more 
damaging yeah. and damaging. devastating. Mm -hmm. If it happens deeper in the earth, it may be a huge earthquake, but the, the effect will the not be felt as on the surface will not be felt as much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so these things happen. And and, and where they are situated, where Hataya is situated, yeah. is situated um, close to the mountainous areas. Um, that borders Europe and Asia. Mm, mm. And so earthquakes are pretty much common in that area. Yeah. So earthquakes happen every time um, now and then. But to but have this, to this magnitude, level. Yeah. and there were two, 7.4 and yeah. 7.8. And that happened on Monday. And on Wednesday, a 5.7 earthquake also hit Turkey. So it, 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 was, it was that bad. And Turkey... It's an advanced country, mm. far more advanced than Ghana. It's not, let's say, uh, an America or a France, or yeah. but it's, it's yeah. quite advanced. Mm -hmm. of course. And in the midst of the chaos, that's where you had that reportage that, oh, he's been found yeah. and um, he's been pulled out from the rubble. Mm -hmm. Because the, a, an earthquake of this magnitude, it can reduce a first class country mm to a third oh, world country. Yeah. Yes. Easily. Easily. Uh -huh. Because your power hospital is damaged, down, your telecom, are, yeah. road network, you know, network, network exactly. telecommunications is exactly. down. So I there mean, was it's... there was utter chaos yeah. everywhere. And in the midst of that chaos, that's when we had the reportage and things weren't too clear. And later once things got clarified a bit because um, aid had been um, flown in or had started flowing in and um, there had been some level of construction. They had um, crane operators mm -hmm. being able to assess mm. um, the, the, the affected areas mm. and be able to dig through the rubble. That's when we had a little bit of clarity you on know, the it, issue. It, it, even with that, you know, people were like, okay, so we had not found him. Why the report? Look, in the midst is, of the is, chaos. Is, and, and even apart from that, look, sometimes you just want to be hopeful. Yeah. You know, in the midst and, of the and chaos. The way people were looking, I mean, if you saw any person with yeah. like dread, dread or loss, something like that, you know, f over 44,000 people have died. Yeah. So if, I mean, there was too much confusion. Yeah, and, so much chaos. You know, so. And I always say this look, I always use Ghana. I try to break it down as much as I can. Look. Look at all the challenges that we face when we, we try to move logistics from Accra to say wa. Mm. Now multiply it times three. In a country that just got hit by two earthquakes, mm. that one measures seven. I mean your roads are your roads are broken up. Your roads oh, are another measure seven point yeah. four. So you how are you going to yeah. and yeah. we saw the whole community yeah. came to nuts. Yeah. You, you get, get it. it. So how so are you going to transport um, cranes? Yeah there what how are you going to pass? transport um food yeah water shelter so yeah. in, in the early days it was just chaos, chaos yeah it was just chaos it was um later that things died down a little mm -hmm. bit and there was clarity yeah. and you can't blame anyone there's not there's nothing about finger pointing it was just utter chaos yeah. because the no, uh, magnitude I mean, uh, an earthquake this point, of this look, magnitude this point, we have bigger Issues mm -hmm. yeah, and that quick of this you know, magnitude so will that, always so that, bring such such issues. Well, and look, yeah, it, it is. I, I it is woke that. up this morning and I was like, "Hey, now can you see Yeah. You know, even even seeing and yeah. confirming the yeah. thing, we are still trying to find ways and means yeah. to not accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Imano, you know, I called, can't there be a miracle at this point? I, I spoke with Imano Clotti. He was part of the 2013 Afcon team. Okay. Uh, it was it Saturday? Um, after the news broke, mm -hmm. the news broke in the morning. I called him around four, and the guy couldn't even speak up. It was so difficult to hear what he was saying. And the little I was able to hear, yeah. he was uh, he, he was saying that I, I still don't believe it mm. until I see his body. Mm. I will not believe with it. my very own eyes. Yeah. I, I still will. <coughs> yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. It, it is depressing. Yeah. It is a very sad. We, we can mm. just. Very Keep his situation. family in our prayers yeah. and um, God bless his That's soul. That's what we need to do. A soldier has fallen, a true black yeah. star. Yeah. But what can we do? Yeah, yeah. Message, to, message to our, our folks. Help out. Help yes. folks who are in need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you are privileged to be in that position. Yeah. Yeah. Help folks who are in need. Yeah. However you can, with whatever means you can, yeah. help folks who yeah. are in need. Yeah. That is what I should live for. Mm. And that's what um, he would wish his, his friends, his teammates, his family yeah. would do. So let's, mm. let's carry 
um, his legacy, his legacy on. On. Yeah. and let let him live on live and for others. Live for others.